Hello, this video is Your Mastectomy Recovery, Nine Important Tips That Make a Huge Difference. Hi, I'm Marnie Clark and I am a breast cancer coach and a breast cancer survivor. If you're about to have a mastectomy or you've just been through it, I will be sharing with you my list of the nine best things that make such a huge, incredible difference when you're healing up from this type of surgery. And please watch the video right through to the very end because at the end of it, I'm going to be sharing with you a bonus tip on the, uh, the things that you can do that will help to reduce your risk of recurrence by as much as 68%. So, although I did not have mastectomy myself, I had a very large lumpectomy followed by reconstruction. And I personally tried each and every one of these tips that I'm about to share with you and I've also shared these tips with my breast cancer coaching clients who have been through a mastectomy. And everybody said they all, all these tips had made such a huge difference to their recovery. So without further ado, here are my nine best tips. Tip number one, three days prior to surgery, start yourself on homeopathic arnica. If you can't do any of the other nine tips, do this one. This is a don't miss, it makes a huge difference. Uh, Arnica Montana is a plant that is known for its anti-inflammatory and healing benefits. It helps to reduce bruising and pain. Uh, I believe it's easiest to take in the form of a homeopathic and it comes in little bottles like this. Arnica Montana 30C. Um, it, it's available at most health food shops and so make sure you get yourself over to the health food shop and get a bottle of this. It is truly remarkable. My surgeon was so impressed with my recovery when I was using this. He asked me, what are you doing? He says, usually the bruising is much worse than this uh, after this type of surgery. And so I showed it to him and he immediately started carrying it on his uh, on his countertop in his surgery. So uh, just a little tip for you. Arnica Montana, pretty amazing stuff. Okay, so this is the homeopathic Arnica protocol. When taking a dose of homeopathic pillules, pour them into the cap of the bottle and from there toss them into your mouth under the tongue. Never touch homeopathic pillules as it interferes with their energetic properties. So... Prior to surgery, three days prior to surgery, you're going to start by taking two Arnica 30C pills under the tongue just once that day. Two days prior to surgery, you'll take two pills under the tongue twice during the day. And one day prior to surgery, you're going to take two pills under the tongue three times during the day. So you can see that you're slowly ramping it up. Now on the day of surgery, take two Arnica 30C pills four times before surgery commences. For instance, if there's four hours to go prior to the surgery, you'll want to take two pills each hour. Right after surgery, take two Arnica 30C pills every 15 minutes as soon as possible when you get back to your room and do this for one hour. After the first hour, take two Arnica 30C pills every hour for the duration of the day until you retire for the night. Postoperatively, day one, post-op, take two 30C pills every four hours for the duration of the day. On day two, you're going to take two four times a day. On day three, you're going to take two three times a day. And on day four, you're going to take two two times a day. And on day five, you'll take two pills once a day and continue until you're completely recovered and the, and the incisions have healed. This is all completely safe. It's all very mild. So I hope you found that homeopathic protocol easy to follow. Now, while you're still in the hospital, you are going to need protein to help you heal those incisions. Most, or, uh, most hospitals are not going to offer you organic meat. And if you're also, if you're vegan or vegetarian, uh, protein is going to be uh, something you're really going to want to uh, add to your um, diet. It's really important. So um, I suggest that you get yourself a good organic protein powder and add that to smoothies or juices or your drinking water. Get it in you. It's important stuff. It will help you start healing. And uh, just make sure it doesn't contain something called soy protein isolate. Normally, uh, normal organic soy is fine for you. Get that through your heads. People are telling you it's not. Organic soy is fine for you. 
just don't have anything with soy protein isolate because that has actually been shown to uh, be more of a breast cancer risk. So um, just having a source of high quality protein is super important while you're, while you're healing through these incisions. So tip number three, you need to nourish your immune system. Uh, because your immune system is taking a big hit with this type of surgery, it only makes sense to rebuild it as quickly as possible. And also, I mean, you've got breast cancer, so obviously the immune system is not doing what it's supposed to be doing. And uh, I have found few things that work better than this little product right here. It's called Transfer Factors. The brand name is For Life, For Life Transfer Factor uh, Plus uh, is what that's called. And it helps your body to heal. I'm not supposed to make claims about products, I know, but this is what I found from experience. This stuff works. It helps to build your immune system, helps your body heal itself. And you know, uh, we need the biggest edge we can get, right? Tip number four, essential oils help to fight against certain types of infections and they promote healing. Uh, certain essential oils, and I recommend a blend by Young Living called Panaway. I used this during my surgery recovery, and I had no infections, no problems, and the incisions healed really quickly. Now, obviously, you're not going to want to put this right directly into the wound. You won't be able to anyway because they're covered up with bandages. So. What you do is you put this very close to the bandages. The oils will migrate where they need to go. I found this was absolutely amazing for its healing properties. Um, you know, there are good things in it. And that's all I'm gonna say about that. They have certain phytochemicals that help to fight against infection. And where is the best place to pick up an infection but a hospital? <laughs> so this is a really good thing to be using. And, and you can continue using it afterwards as well. So this is all while you're still in the hospital. I had to hide myself in the, into the, in the, um, the bathroom because my nursing staff really wasn't on board with using essential oils. So I thought, I'm gonna use them anyway, I don't care. Uh, I think these days, this was a number of years ago, 2004, uh, these days nursing staffs are much more open to using essential oils, but see how you go. Anyway, this is a good one. Now, we're going to talk about healing at home. Tip number five, nothing heals like sleep. Uh, once you're home, it's essential that you get as much sleep as you possibly can. Take naps. You just sleep as much as you can. Uh, and don't feel guilty about getting that extra sleep. You need it right now. Um, and if you are having troubles with sleeping, breathe in a little bit of lavender oil before you go to bed. It really helps you to promote, it helps to promote a better quality of sleep at night. So sleep is key. And tip number six, nutrition is important. Uh, once you're home, keep going with that high quality organic protein powder if you want. Um, but mainly you want to be following a good plant-based diet. Loads of fruit and vegetables, as much as you can possibly eat. Eat big salads have juices, have green smoothies, whatever you can get into, because it will really help to uh, promote healing. And keep, keep going with the transfer factors and the essential oils. Those two things are also going to help you quite a lot with the healing process. Tip number seven, limit stress as much as possible. This is not the time to entertain guests or dig up the vegetable garden or repaint the house. Um, too much stress and or movement can impede the healing process. So, um, you know, things like meditation. Meditation is one of the best ways to keep stress levels at bay. I can't, I can't tell you how, how much it can help to optimize the healing process. Just by calming yourself, maybe doing a little visualization when you bring a, a healing white light into your body. This is really important stuff and it does make a huge difference. Tip number eight is to take bromelain. Uh, it's a enzyme found in the stems of pineapple. It's helpful for reducing post-operative swelling. Bromelain can be taken after you finish the Arnica protocol and it acts as an anti-inflammatory, helps to reduce pain, bruising, 
tenderness uh, in much the same way as non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs will do. The only difference being that bromelain will not harm your liver. Um, also, Boswellia is fantastic for the same thing. And that's a good brand. Uh, Boswellia is a constituent of frankincense, and it is awesome for its anti-inflammatory benefits. You wouldn't necessarily need to take both of them together. Uh, one or other, one or the other would be fine. Um, and neither one works better than the other. They just both work exceedingly well for uh, uh, anti-inflammation. And since we know that cancer is an inflammatory process, these two can also be used for anti-cancer benefits. Tip number nine is to take flaxseed, freshly ground flaxseed, one to two tablespoons per day, mixed into your food, your smoothies, your juices, however you can get it into you. It really helps the cells of your body repair themselves and it has a couple of follow-on benefits as well. One of the things you might be suffering from post-operatively is a constipation and the fiber in flaxseed really helps with that. So um, there's a good tip for you. And also because of the fact that flaxseed is hugely anti-inflammatory, it also helps to reduce risk of uh, the breast, breast cancer coming back. So it's one of the things I put my survivors on almost immediately. And um, now here's that bonus tip I talked about at the very beginning of the video. As soon as the scars begin healing and knitting together, you'll want to start doing some gentle movement and your surgeon will let you know when it's okay to do that. And movement, walking, gentle stretching, yoga, whatever you can do that you enjoy doing at least 30 minutes per day. One study in particular showed that just by doing 30 minutes of exercise per day, following a mainly plant and vegetable based diet, doesn't mean you can't have meat, but um, make sure you're having loads and loads of fresh organic fruits and vegetables every single day and having a good support network of people upon whom you can rely reduces your risk of the, of the breast cancer coming back by as much as 68%. So the important thing to remember after surgery is to try and stay positive and relax and let your body do what it does best. It knows how to heal itself. You just need to give it the proper things that help that along. Um, you know, good nutrition, minimize stress, get plenty of rest, and promote good circulation. Those are all good things to know about. So I hope you found that information helpful, and if you did, leave me a comment at the, at the bottom of the video. I would really like to hear from you. And, you know, there are a lot of important things to know about healing from breast cancer, things that doctors won't tell you because they just don't know about them. It takes people who've been there and done that, and, uh, you know, I've definitely been there and done that and I'd be more than happy to help you. One of my recent clients, Mary, told me, uh, Marty, I was spending so much time on the internet looking for information, it was doing my head in. She said, uh, when I found you, I was so relieved. Our coaching session together made such a huge difference for me, and I feel so much better than I did. And she says, I don't know what I would do, uh, what, how I could have gotten through this without you. So um, I'm really happy to get feedback like that. So if you would like to find out what things you can do that will help you through this journey, um, and it doesn't matter whether you're at the start of it or five, five years later, um, I have information that will help you. Uh, you want to stay connected with me, just sign up for my free newsletters. The link is below this video. Uh, don't spend hours online uh, searching for things and doing yourself no good at all, um, stealing your precious energy time that you could be spending healing. Um, let me do that for you. And I have done it. It's on my website. More, more often than not, what you're looking for is right there. And I'm more than happy to help you. Thanks for watching.